morning. Trying to forgot how you, there we go. Good morning and welcome to Dispensational Bible Church, where we study the whole Bible the Bible's own way, and we uh, Welcome Barb and Tom. They traveled down from the Stark County area to be with us today, and we're thankful for that. It's good just to catch up on some things and talk about some ministry needs and all. And, uh, but uh, we also encourage the people in Facebook and later on in YouTube Live, or not YouTube Live, but YouTube channel, uh, that you can listen to this message also. But we're, we're at, uh, at Dispensational Bible Church. I know it's a mouthful. It's five syllables, dispensational. You know, and you're like, wow, that's a big word. It's a Bible word. It's a King James Bible-believing word, and, and this gives you an opportunity to say, what does that mean? So that was a re one of the reasons why we chose Dispensational Bible Church as our name. But we also study the whole Bible, the Bible's own way, and I trust that the audio is coming through okay and all. But... Uh, uh, we study the whole Bible, the Bible's own way. All the Bible's for us, but not all of it's to you. So we have to understand the Word of God rightly divided. But uh, as we think about um, some prayer requests and praise items, uh, the people on our mi hearts and mind, I know Barb's back was hurting her last week, and, and she's here. She's here today, so that's a, that's a blessing. And uh, keep Walt and Barb and uh, Walt at uh, uh, church. Uh, Keep him in thought and prayer and Jim and all the people that's uh, that's been sick and uh, uh, down down in uh, illnesses or job situations and, and all. But uh, also keep our uh, our government in thought and prayer. Uh, uh, I think of our president of the United States. I wouldn't want that job, uh, you know. And things he goes through just just when you really know. Or try to see somebody's heart, not not their head knowledge, but seems like uh, he's wanting to try to get us on the right track, or been on the right track, but he got derailed. And uh, so we just need to keep him in thought and prayer. Keep your local government in thought and prayer. Also, uh, if you want to uh, donate uh, to Dispensational Bible Church, you can go on our website. We have a donate button there. If you want to mail us something, it's uh, uh, 592 uh, P.O. Box 592 Cambridge, Ohio 43725 uh, you can find all that information out on the website um, let's see if there's anything else here oh, August should be okay as far as not traveling but there's a couple of uh, uh, meetings that's going on towards the uh, mid-August to the end of August, and Sherry and I may travel out to visit one of those Morris Chestnuts at Ridge Farm has has a conference. It's, it's the oldest uh, Bible conference for Grace School to Bible. So it's been going on since 83, maybe, 82, 83. So uh, some of us was a, just a, you know, small kid at that time, but many of us uh, would... Uh, it's a good conference, I should say. So uh, I'll have more information on that. And then uh, Labor Day. I may be here Labor Day. I may not be. But wherever I'm at on Sunday, Labor Day, uh, if I'm in the hills of Virginia, if I'm on a trout stream, if I'm here, 
I'm going to do a, a message live. Uh, so if you're used to li listen to us on Facebook Live, then you'll you'll see me or see what we're doing there. Uh, so if you, with that being said, if you have your red books, let's sing a song this morning. Turn to be turning to page 500. We're going to sing when the road is called up yonder. And uh, let's see, 500. 500. Yep. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the great Moses is curled by a bear. Oh, wrong one. Hang on, guys. That's uh, when the roll is called. <laughs> Oh, that's when, okay. Sorry, guys. Hang on. That was actually when we all did that. Think about that for a second. Will you be up yonder when the roll call? That's an important bit of information there because we as dispensations believe in a, a catching away that Paul talks about, and uh, it's a secret event, and he takes us out of here. But if you're not saved today, guess what? You're going to be left behind. Okay, to believe a lie. And that's much what we're talking about a little bit in Daniel. So let's go to word of prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the things you've given us. And as we think about the role that called up yonder, if we think about the loss that needs to hear the good news that Christ died for their sins and buried rose again, or if we understand that you're saved today, to understand the Bible rightly divided is a key to, to that we need to know and to know what how we're dealing with these times. And Father, as we th continue our 
uh, our lessons through the book of Daniel, we hope that we'll be able to glean something what Daniel could have understood his times and what we can understand in future times as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're in lesson 67. Uh, be turning to Daniel chapter 11, verse 21. I know Tom was think uh, I was hoping we'd be in Daniel chapter 12, but we're getting there, but uh, slowly but surely. But we are coming almost to the end of the uh, the book of Daniel. Uh, yeah, about this time next year, because it's been, I think I looked back on the little uh, thing that keeps popping up uh, that we're, we was in lesson 24 last year. So we're in lesson 67. So we did progress a little bit. But uh, we are thankful that we do have the time. And, you know, we talk about all the time that the fact that we got between now and the catching away to just relax and absorb the Word of God and, and allow it to work in us and be able to uh, address some things that's going out here in this nasty now and now because you know what's going on out in the world today does not seem pleasant. Uh, as you was 20 years ago, you was like, life's so happy, you know, now, 20 years later, it's like, oh, what's changed? 30 years and so on. Uh, I can remember as a child, you know, 8 years old, 9 years old, 10 years old, watching my grandfather's brothers and all gathering around the oak tree at the Green Shutters drinking knee and Coca-Cola, which they called dope then. If you, were, if you, you know, back in the day, if you said you a bottle of dope, that's what Coca-Cola and stuff was. But, you know, you listen to them how they dealt with the Depression and how they're doing through World War II and, and all that type of thing. And they had some hard times, too. And I, I know they looked at me as a young uh, whippersnapper and, you know, and looking at that, that guy ain't got a chance. You know, he ain't going to grow up in this world. It's not going to be nothing. Well, guess what? I have grown up in this world, and, and it's still something to glean to. But it's more pleasant to know who you are in Christ in the, in the times of the Gentiles. And that's why we're studying the book of Daniel. And I hope you understood some th- or understanding some things that, that what, what Daniel saw way over here was reflecting through all this time period and over here in ages to come. Now, there's a gap there that he didn't understand. The mystery was hid in God, okay? It wasn't hid in his word. Acts 28ers type of people would say it was hid in God's word. They just didn't know about it. I'm like, hmm, that don't make sense. It was hitting God, the mystery that we're talking about through Paul's revelation. Now, we left off with the Antichrist basically having two careers. The son of perdition that we're getting ready to go into, and that vile person in verse 21 uh, is the man of sin, and that's the first half of the week. Uh, from, from verse 21 through 28 is where we're at. Beginning in verse 30, uh, through the end of the chapter, you'll have come to the middle week of the tribulation, if you will. And verse 31 is that middle week. And in the middle week, you'll have a transformation taking place. Uh, chapter 11, verse 21. And in his estate shall stand a vi- up a vile person, to whom they shall not give honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peacefully and attain the kingdom by flatteries. And the arms of the flood, of a flood, shall be, shall they be overthrown, overflown from before him, and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of a covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall be dis- worked deceitfully. For he shall come up, and shall become strong with a small people. He shall enter peacefully even upon the flat, fattest parts of the providence, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey, spoils, and riches. Yea, he shall forecast his device against the strongholds even for a time. Now the man of sin comes in and takes over Israel. That's what's being taken place here. He obtains the kingdom by how? Flatteries. Flatteries. And the kingdom is a, he is obtaining is not Syria, and is not his own kingdom. Look at verse 28a there. Then, after, this is after verses 21 through 27, shall he return into his land with what? Great riches. 
And what he's doing in verse 21 through 27, he's going down to Israel and doing all that stuff, and then he goes back home. Okay? And so the kingdom that he's obtaining in verse 21 is Israel. You have Syria, Israel, and Egypt. It very well could be, but he's taking he's he's, t- he's 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 taking over Israel, and the way he does it, verses twenty two through twenty three, is the prince of the what, covenant, you see that, and after a league made with him, and what is that? He 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 shall make a covenant with with the, uh, with them one week. He makes a covenant with Israel, the league, and deceives them, so that many is Israel. And we're going to find out here in a little bit that Israel sides. Many of Israel's uh, political people sides with the Antichrist. Okay? So he deceives them. And now notice how he does it. Okay? He shall come in peacefully and obtain the kingdom by what? Flatteries. He comes peacefully. He's a peacemaker. He's, a, he's politically... He's there. Now, you know as well as I know that uh, that's what politicians do. They come in with flatteries and say, we're going to make changes and we're going to do this for you. You know as well as I know that don't happen in a lot of places. But this is going to happen for Israel. And this guy has a peace policy, unlike any peace policy that you could ever sign at Camp David. Okay? A lot of people want to make peace, peace, peace with Israel, you know, and showing Israel this. But I'm going to tell you something. You know what Esau and, uh, was it Esau and Jacob was? They was brothers. Okay? You know who uh, uh, Ismael and Isaac was? They was brothers. Okay? They're kinfolk over there, guys. The people that descended from Ismael and the people that descended from Isaac are, are kin. So they're having a, uh, you ever heard of, um, uh, yeah, Family Feud, you ever heard of Hatfield and McCoy's? Oh, yeah. That's basically what's going all over there, and God will settle that, okay? You and I going over and making uh, treaties and stuff, it don't do it, make a hill of beans with them. But anyway, let's go on about this. He comes in with peace policy, and he takes a kingdom peacefully and with flatteries. And that is what it's mean by uh, chapter 11, verse 24, when he says, He shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. You know how many years it's been trying to bring peace with Israel and all that stuff? Listen, you know when before Daniel, uh, before they went into captivity, Israel was the top nation, top dog of the world. There was no other nations in the world that had God with them. You were that? And every nation of the world knew who God of Abraham and Isaac Jacob was. So when they came in, remember we read this before, when they came in uh, and Jeremiah was talking about their coming and all that stuff, the captains that was coming in to take them out in captivity knew exactly what was going on. Now, how did he know what was going to go on with Israel? Because he had the Word of God. He listened to the Word of God and, he, and all that stuff. So, so that's uh, really something to think about. But his fathers destroyed and consumed the land. That's all they did. Wars, 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 wars. If you think about the land of Palestine over there right now, that's a country and a land. Who claims that to be their own right now? There's a group of people over there. Oh, Palestinians. Yeah. You know, that's why they hate the fact that Israel, you know, they don't have this land. They don't have this land. Well, I read that God promised it to Israel. Okay, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. One day it's going to be his. But right now, you know, if you win something in war and you take it, it's yours. And that's what England done in the, uh, when they became United Kingdom the United Kingdoms of the world, they own that property. They own that land. But you see today, it's not, it's not a pleasant place to be. I don't know if you saw that bomb go off the other day in Beirut. I mean, it looked like an atomic bomb that went off. And, and that, that, you know, that country, Lebanon, at one time was the most Christian nation in the Middle East. Right there. And then they allowed these 
moss in there and all this stuff. Next thing you know, we kept backing out, backing out, backing out, and, and now it's just the way, way it is. But we read about this in back, uh, back in uh, verses 16 a little while ago. Then came in and, and took the land of Palestine by force. That's why they don't like people over there. They're always being conquered. But this guy that we're talking about comes up in the fattest part of the earth, uh, of the land, verse 24, and he comes up to the fattest place and scatters and divides the prey, the spoils, the riches among the people. That's basically communism. Okay? And, and they're taking the wealth and he, he's taking the wealth and dividing it amongst the people there. Now, but when he comes up with his peace policy, it takes it it takes over. You can go in there by force and conquer people, but are, are they going to be your friends? But now he's got a peace policy that never been there had never been a king of Syria who had done this before. They always went down and fought and took over it with armed aggressions type of thing. But this guy comes in with good words and fair speeches. And they're going to listen to that with a peace policy. And he gets the kingdom, and that's something his father's 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 never did. And so no king of Syria had ever obtained the kingdom of Israel in that way. Now, what does he do? Israel at the time has needed three things. Well, I think we touched on this a little bit last week. They need three things there. They need money. They need protection. And they want a temple. Okay? You think about it today. They want money. They want protection. And they want a temple. Israel wants a temple, but the, the Jerusalem is divided up. So this guy provides all three of these things and wins their allegiance and makes a covenant with them. They need money. And he provides it with them. He scatters among them the prey, the spoils, and the riches. That's what verse 24 did. And they need protection. Verse 25, and he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for he shall forecast device against him. The king of the south threatens Israel again, and he comes in there and protects them. With me? That's what he does. Then... He gives them a temple. And remember we studied that back in uh, chapter 8, verses 13 and 14, how that 20, 220 days after he signs a covenant with the, uh, with the, uh, they sign a covenant with the Antichrist, he's going to have their temple rebuilt and they offer sacrifices once again. You know, Jesus said when you see the abomination spoken of the prophet by the prophet Daniel stand in the holy place. So the temple is going to be what? Rebuilt? Is it built right now? No. Are they breaking land? Are they sending uh, 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 concrete mixers and all that? No. So this is another thing you should be looking at in a prophetic program that's not taking place yet. But everybody wants to say we're go we're we're in the times right now. The Antichrist is here and all that stuff. The temple's got to be built, guys. So he provides for them what they want and what they need. Almost like a little kid. I won't, I won't, I won't. And their daddy's going, okay, okay. Here's your, here's. Boy, what's this type of society have we built that way, you know? Uh, it's funny. Uh, uh, I was talking with a guy who was over at ranch yesterday, and he's a black guy, and he's sitting there at the picnic table. And I went over and got me a fried bologna sandwich from the two guys in a grill. And I sat down. I said, can I sit down with you? He said, uh, yeah, absolutely. And I started talking to him a little bit, and, and he was a hard worker, this guy was. He started a, a, a trash pickup service with a trash truck, had taught uh, uh, his two kids used that business and went to college. And then he became an assistant deputy sheriff, and he was telling me about this stuff. And, and I was saying, you know, about kids these days, and I, I kind of bragged on my son being 26 years old, and I said, he's not a normal 26-year-old guy. I said, he's got a little patience. He, he's starting to understand if you work, you get things. And, he, and he's starting to understand if you work, you, if you don't work, you don't eat. And he goes, because he's talking about kids, what they want today, and they don't want to work, and they want a handout. And I said, well, the Bible says if a, if a, 
If you don't work, you don't eat. And if you don't take care of your family, you're worse than an infidel. And he goes, it does say that, don't it? And it was just a pleasure to talk with him that way. And this is what this that Israel wants, wants, wants. And this peace guy goes, you know, here you go. I'm going to give it to you with flattery and stuff. And they make a league with him. And they have a leader. And they make a covenant with him. In verse 22. And they make a league with him. Verse 23. And notice after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. Do you know what flattery is? We talked about all right, that already. This guy comes in with flattery, and, and, and he deceives them. He, he lies to them. And uh, Psalms 55, if you, want, if you don't want to turn there, you can. I'm going to read it to you anyway. Here's what the psalmist, maybe you should turn there. Psalms 55, verse 20. Here's what the psalmist is saying about the Antichrist. Chapter 55, verse 20. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He hath broken his covenant. He makes a covenant with them, and he what? Breaks it. Verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war is in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they draw, were, were they drawn swords. So that's what he does, isn't it? Smooth talking. And this guy talks peace and he gets his leadership and controls, but his heart is destruction. That's why and no matter what, what dispensation you are in, in the Word of God, it's always a heart issue. Okay? God knows your heart. Like today, God knows your heart. Okay, you can have all the head knowledge in the world, but it's, your, it's the heart issue that changes you. Daniel chapter 11, verse 24a. He shall enter peacefully even upon the fattest places of the providence. This is how he takes over. He comes in with peace, and he gets Israel to sign that covenant by protecting them, providing them with money, and promising them a temple. And he wins their allegiance, and he takes over. Verse 25. He, and he shall stir up his power. He takes over Israel peacefully, but he is fighting all the time. Behind, almost like behind the scenes, you know what I mean? What's sad is, you know, I can't, can't help thinking about, you wouldn't think this takes place in the United States of America today. Fighting behind the scenes to take over a kingdom, do you? It does. That's what's. That's what to me. It's it, that it, it's. Uh, that's another topic, but he Revelation chapter six says he comes in on a white horse and a bow, but no arrows, and he goes forth conquering and to conquer. That's the first half of that week. Is not really peace at all. So there's all all this war going on over there, and he starts out getting Israel by peace, and then he goes after Egypt in verse twenty five. And he, and, he, and he his courage against the king of the south with a great army, and the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a great, very great and mighty army, army, but he shall not stand, for he shall forecast devices against him. Verses 26 and 27, chapter 11. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his armies shall overflow and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts shall, be, shall do mischief, and they shall speak lies at, at, at one table. You know, they're going to have peace talks, right? And they're going to be lying through their teeth, basically. You don't see that ever happening in peace talks, right? Of course you do. And they will lie, speak lies at one, uh, at one table. You see people negotiating all the time, don't you? You know, and they're trying to win your hearts, and they're trying to tell you things. You know, we talk about car salesmen all the time, don't we? We talk about insurance salesmen all the time. We talk about carpet salesmen. We talk about salesmen, you know, that, that will just, we know that, well, 
sometimes we hadn't had the backbone when we go look for vehicles to say, no, we're not buying that, we're leaving. But we sometimes we bowed, had bowed down to them and say, yep, this is what we do. We'll sign it just to get out of the door after eight hours. You ever notice that? You're there for eight, ten hours and like, wait a minute, I just want to come in here for a second. I know what I want. I'll get me out of here. But they will sit there and talk with you and flatter your words and promise you this and promise you that. Sometimes you've got to pull teeth just to get what they promised you. You know that? And it'd be in writing. But, uh, but it shall not prosper. For yet the end shall be at, this, uh, at the appo- time appointed. What is the time appointed? Verses 28 and 29 tells us. Then shall he return to his land with great riches. He goes back up to Syria. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant. And he shall do exports and return to his own land. At the time appointed he shall return and come towards the south. But it shall not be as the former or as the latter. For the ships of what it's Chittim shall come against him. Therefore, he shall be grieved. Now, you begin from right here, you begin to see what's taking place in that second part of that week. So this is where we're at right here. Daniel is looking over this tribulation period seven years, right? One week. Seventy years will be determined upon who? Thy people. Who is thy people? Israel. Thank you. It's not the body of Christ. You are not spiritual Israel today. You're not Israel, so it's not affecting you. Praise God, hallelujah. Right? You know, but uh, what you have so far is the details to have to do with the rise of the Antichrist prior to the beginning of that 70th week. That's what we're leading up to, how he's going to rise. And, and after the rapture, prior to the uh, beginning of the 70th week, his career starts to take off. Okay, I mentioned the rapture. That's, a, that's an event Paul talks about that's going to take place before that time period. Praise God, hallelujah. You know, we're going to be, we're not, we're saved from the wrath to come. Okay? Uh, that's who we are. So, uh, through the first half of the week. Now, uh, looking at the time when they focus this is mainly on the son of perdition. That's where we're talking about. Memory starts out as a man of sin. Okay? And Daniel chapter 11, verse 29, At the time appointed he shall return and come towards the south, but it shall not be as the former or as the latter. There are three invasions. This one, the former one back in verse 25, and the third one is in verses 42 through 43. So this Antichrist is, is actually coming through there three times, okay? And chapter thir- uh, verse 30, Daniel chapter 11, verse 30, For the ships of Chittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So shall he do. He shall re- even return and have intelligence when th- with them for that forsake the holy covenant. The reference to the ships of Chittim. You ever thought about that? Okay, look at Numbers chapter 24. Get Numbers chapter 24. Get Numbers chapter 24 and Genesis chapter 10. The ships of Chittim, the ships is possibly referenced to European powers. Okay? And and there's there's activities there about the European common market or the European government and political setup during this tribulation period. The idea is, you know, you heard the ten nations, ten confederate nations on the common market doesn't show up here. The ten kings are in Palestine, in the Middle East, not in Europe. That's where the Antichrist comes out of. So the second coming passage is where Balaam is given a prophecy about Israel in the last day. Number chapter 24, verse 24. And the ships shall come from the coast of Chittim and shall affect Azar and shall affect Eber, that's Hebrews. And he shall also what and he shall also shall perish what? Forever. Ash- Ashur is Assyria. 
And when he says it shall affect Eber, and he, that guy who sends the ship, shall perish forever. Okay? Whoever sending those ships from that country is going to die and perish. And, and that's a strange reference there. But the ships come from Chittim, and it shall affect Assur, that's Assyria, and Eber, Eber, that's Israel, and he shall perish forever. Now, Genesis chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10. Notice that Chittim is one of the sons of Japheth. Verse 1. Now the generations of the son of Noah are Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were the sons born after the flood. Verse 2. And the son of Japheth, Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Mediah, Jevon, Tubal, Mishaph, and Teres. And the son of Javan is Elijah, Teres, Kittim, that's Shittim, and who? Dudam. I know I butchered those names, so, you know, <laughs> thank you for just being patient with me. But if you remember uh, the Bible, genealogy, where does Shem go to? Shem. Ham, Shem, and Japheth, where did he go? He goes to, the, goes to the east. Ham goes to the south. And Japheth goes to the northwest, like up into Europe area. So Chittim is evidently a reference to some European power. Isaiah talks about the burden of Tyre, how ye ships of Taurus ye have laid waste, so that there is no house, no entering in from the land of Chittim, it is revealed to them. So that is a land that uh, Japheth's relatives went to, his, his grandchildren. Back to verse 30 in uh, Daniel chapter 11. For the ships of Chittim, that could be some European power, shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. He will come back and have indignation against the covenant that he made that began the week. Okay? That's what begins the week. So he, so shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. In other words, there are some Israelites that will be on the Antichrist side. And Jews that join with him against their nation is a part of that. Remember we laid out the... Uh, uh, the image, the head. Remember who the head was? Babylon. And the breasts and the arms was who? Media Persia. And the belly and the thighs was Greece. And there's a gap. And then there's two legs. A lot of people says they're Rome, but there's a gap there. That I believe that gap is Rome. The two legs is what we're talking about here is the king of the south, north and king of the south. Then you have the toes. Who are the toes? King Kings. But, uh, but who also is the feet and with the toes? That's I should say. Who's the feet there? Who are we talking about? Who are we talking about now? Not Israel. Palestine. Not Palestine. Who's, who's, who's here? Who, who are we talking about doing all this fighting and peacemaking here? The Antichrist. There you go. So Jews would join him in that fifth column down there. And, and they uh, they plot and they have a uh, have their intelligence back and forth. So they're going back and forth that with with the Antichrist. And, and there's a group of people there. Verse 31. So listen, it should not surprise you that there's going to be some Israelites there that's going to join the Antichrist for power. Okay, it didn't stop them over here. Okay, it, 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 so you got to remember who's the god of this world, Satan. Satan. He's controlling the governments and stuff like that. So if he can sway you to go up under his policy of evil, he's going to do it. That's why today, if you think about, it, you got to be very, very careful with your mind and your spirit, because you can be lied to. You can be tricked believing something that God is doing today. You know, earthquakes and floods and stuff like that. You know, they say, well, God's trying to tell us something. Well, don't you read his book? This is where God's talking. 
But verse 31, An arm shall stand on his part, he will get an army, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifices, and they shall place the abomination that maketh what? Desolate. Now, taking away the daily sacrifices takes you back, takes place back in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, as we read. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause this sacrifice and the obligation to cease. And for the overspreading of the abomination, he shall make desolate, even unto the community. Consumination, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. What he does, he stops the sacrifice right in the middle week. The Antichrist does. And he sets up the abomination that maketh us desolate. You know what that is? No, we say pigs and stuff like that. What else? What would you say? He said, what he does, he sets up an idol. You know, idol of himself in the temple. And then this time was when he sets up himself on the cherubim and I'm God. You with me? He sits there and says, I am God. I'm, and people's going to say, how are they going to understand that? Seeing is believing type of thing, right? Uh, so he's declaring himself to be the most high God. Now, in Daniel chapter 8, verses 11 and 12, it says, Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of hosts, and by him the daily sacrifices was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And 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 host was given him against the daily sacrifices by reason of transgression. That is the army and the arms that he bears, and has cast down the truth to the ground, and he and it practiced and prospered. When that thing takes place in the tribulation period over there. Tough times are coming for the nation of Israel. You and I think we got tough times now. It's going to be really tough for them. Be turning to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Jesus referred to Lord Jesus Christ while he walked on this earth. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in his earthly ministry, he talked about that time over there and ages to come. Okay? He didn't talk about the time that we're in right now. He says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet, excuse me, by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him what? Listen, if you have the word of God and the spirit of God inside of you, then let him understand. He, you're going to understand some things. Okay? Just like today, you can understand some things. Let then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Listen, wherever you look outside right now is not your Judea. It's not your Jerusalem. Okay? Let him which is, in a, is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight not be in, in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. For then shall be what? Great tribulations. Such was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So that great tribulation over here that Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ is talking about for the nation of Israel is going to be great, unlike spoken any other time. So the Antichrist begins the 70th week by making a seven-year covenant, okay, with Israel. That thing will run for seven years. And then Jesus Christ comes back and cleanses the temple. And in, in the middle of the week, three and a half years on each side, he breaks the covenant. And he established the daily sacrifices. That's what he did to the Antichrist. And 220 days later, they have a temple. And for 200, uh, 2,300 days, days the temple is involved in that time period so you have so you have you seven years the man of sin is up here in the first part the son of perdition is in the second part then three and a half years is 160 days then uh three and a half years on the other side is uh, uh, 
1260 days. The tribulation, great tribulation, middle of the week. The abomination that makes desolate. That's what Daniel chapter 24 is talking about. Okay, you with me? Daniel chapter 8 verse 14 says, And he said unto them, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. In the middle of the week, guys, and the Antichrist will take away the daily sacrifices that he allowed Israel to reestablish, and he sets his, uh, up his own system of worship. And when he does this, he sets up an image, which is called the abomination that maketh desolate. You've got to remember, all those images and those idols back there leads to apostasy. It, it's true today. When you idolize things, it leads to a, to a departing of who you are in Christ. Israel done that. It wasn't what, uh, n no time they built a calf. Mold you ever notice that? They plucked all their earrings out, took a calf. Aaron carved it with a graving tool. Then you know what he told them Moses, didn't you? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know yeah crazy stuff but look uh so so uh, they established that and in, and and it is the image in revelation 13 that the false prophet gave life to and the people fall down and worship it you got to remember the last half of the week is will uh, it will we call the tribulation the great tribulation but Jesus says when that image is set up, then, the, then will be the what? Great tribulation. Such never was before. The great uh, tribulation technically is the last half of the 70th week. They're going through tri tribulation. We just read that it's not all peace, peace. There's wars going on. Okay? But that great tribulation, I wouldn't want to be a part of that. You know, which I thank God I'm not a part of it. Uh, and, and this is where we're at in Daniel chapter 11, verse 31. And it's important you notice and It's important you notice that in the middle of the 70th week. And I notice a couple of things before we, we uh, close. Try to get through this. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 11, it says, And from the time that the daily sacrifices shall be taken away, and the abomination that make a despot set up, there shall be two... 1,290 days. Now, I've never been good at math. I'd have to take, most of the time I have to take my shoes off to count past 20. But anyway, there are 1,260 days in each half of the 70th week. I think many of you know, understands that. So that's what's up there, seven years. Now, but he says the time that the abomination that make a decimal set up, the daily sacrifice is taken away, it will be a period of 1,290 days. If you start at the end of the tribulation and go backwards 1,290 days, there's a, you will have a 30-day period of time that actually that marks the middle of the week. And that 1,260 day. Now, you have that time period it points out the daily sacrifices taken away. It's kind of weird because you start back here and you go 1,290 days. It goes past the 1,260. You with me? It goes past the midweek into the first part of the midweek. That's what I'm trying to say. So there's a lot of things that's going to be said that takes place in the midst of the midweek. But that doesn't mean that it has to take place on that exact day. You know, I think a lot of times, a lot of places give you a 30-day grace period. You know what I'm talking about? So within that 30 days, anything could happen. You could pay for your policy. They could take something away. They could give something to you. They could, you know what I'm saying? So this is what's going on here. And you could be either in the midst of the things or, and be in the 30 days one way or the other. But evidently, you're going. Something's going to go on there. When I say you're going on there, you're not going to be there. I should say Israel's going to be there. Okay, and you have 1,290 days, 30 days prior to the 1,260 day break, and you have this point referred to in Daniel chapter 11, uh, chapter 12, verse 11 that we just read. At that time, guys, the daily sacrifices will be taken away. 
The Israelites in the tribulation period will be able to identify clearly what is taking place and mark it on their calendar if they're true Bible believers and, and according to what is taking place. And, and there will be a lot going on in that middle week. So if, you was, if Israel, there's a believing remnant of Israel, is going to be over here, they're seeing all this stuff. How would they know what's going on? Did they just wake up in a dream after eating pepperoni pizza and say, hey, Daniel, you know, this is what's going on? Or was they told these things? Okay? They had, they had preachers before that. We were talking about the, you know, people. When I say 144,000, it don't make me a Jehovah Witness, okay? You know what I'm talking about? They believe the 144. That ain't got 144,000 in the Bible is 12,000 from each tribe of Israel and they're male virgins that's going to be untouched, okay, undefiled, and they're going to be preaching before this takes place. So they're going to be preaching about a kingdom and about against that Antichrist. And there's going to, people, Israel's going to hear what they're saying and believe them, and they're going to have a book. Just like you and I have a book today, we have a book that tells us what's going on here. So with that being said, uh, there's going to be some people that, that, that's going to follow Satan. We know the nations will, but there's, there's people in Israel that's as non-believers that's going to fall for this, and, they're going, and that Satan's going to break the covenant for the death of the man of sin, and uh, for Satan, uh, the Antichrist, be, uh, is, is cast out of heaven during this time, and the heavens is rolled up like a scroll and shaken. And the, all them bad apples up there that follow Satan is going to come right to the earth. Okay? And the heavens, right now, you know the heavens are not cleansed. They're clean. Okay? It's going to be. And it's going to be open, wide open. And they're going to be able to see that, that uh, deep sea, that frozen thing is going to be gone. And... Uh, and the resurrection of the son of perdition, and to set and declare himself to be God. And there is a time period in, in there where these things can be accomplished. It's going to take some time. You know, time don't matter to God. You know that. But it's going to take some time to take all this stuff place. Because I know what it would do to my head if, uh, if I'm thinking about some things. It, it, it would shake me up so bad like what just happened. You know, this can't be. Well, it seems like sometimes that happens anyway. But we, we as Bible believers have to understand something here. When you come to the Word of God, and you come to it like Daniel did, and like Paul our Apostle did, and you come with the mind of Christ, you, you see the Bible differently. You with me? If you come to it like our wisdom, no, it just don't do this, We'll never understand this, all that 30 days and stuff like that. But, you got, uh, but what I'm trying to say is when you come to the Word of God, come with an open mind and understanding that God's right and I'm wrong, okay, and you're wrong. So God, God's going to have people over there in ages to come that's going to be able to identify what's going on because they're going to have the books. And, 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 and what's going to happen during... The beginning of the 70th week is when the Antichrist signs a covenant, right? Then the daily sacrifice, within that 30 days. Now, the 30 days that we're talking about, the 1,290 days. I know it's confusing, like, Ed, go, won't move on. Please, won't move on. But you've got to see this. Daily sacrifices are taken away. Uh, the Antichrist proclaims he's God. Uh, the covenant with Israel. The, uh, the Antichrist is assassinated. The Antichrist is resurrected. Uh, Satan is cast out of heaven. The man of sin becomes the son of perdition, and the great tribulation begins. All within that thirty days. Okay, so that that could that could happen. There's a, like I said, grace period. A lot of things happens in thirty days. Now let me ask you this: When was August the first? Nine days ago, eight days ago. Okay. How many days is in August? Thirty. 28? Okay, I'll get those goofed up too. But uh, before you know it's going to be 30 days, it's going to be September. And you're like, wait a minute. 
I just got this bill. Now it's overdue. You know what? Time can go and you can get caught up with other things and forget about what you need to do at prioritize, I guess we should say. Uh, but then after that, when it's three and a half years, the second coming of Jesus Christ comes down. There's a lot going to be taking place there. That's why this book, uh, this chapter, Daniel chapter 11 and 12, what we've been studying, 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, has been fascinating with that prospect of what's going on over there and how Daniel started listening to some things. Let's go to verse uh, 30, um, 32, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. We might get through this chapter, like Tom said, sometime next year. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway uh, verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall, be, shall he corrupt with flatteries. Remember this guy works what? By what? Flatteries. But the people that do know their God stand what? Shall be strong and do exports. And they that understand among the people shall instruct the whole group, all, many. Now these people understand among the people. You with me? And they know what's going on and how to figure this stuff out. And they will have the word of God and have instruction and understanding. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity, by spoils, Many days. Now, that reminds me of the time when the Lord Jesus Christ walked this earth, and I've watched many of you come out of some, some of uh, uh, religious thinking when you was told that when Jesus Christ walked this earth, he didn't come for you. How did that make you feel? It set you back, didn't it? Because did he not say, my blood is shed for many that many is who at that time? Israel. Israel. And people, you know, I watch people just sink back and say, oh my gosh, what are you talking about? And run out the door. Because they've been told that Jesus Christ came for them. Well, if you believe the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in his earthly ministry, he came to Israel first. Okay? And when you understand that, you, you praise God even more. Because it was Israel that's going to take over the earth through the instrument of earth, through the prophetic program. Was the Lord Jesus Christ walking on this earth in the mystery program? No. no. So when you see this many, and Daniel talking about who you think that is. Oh, it must be all of us. Because we're going to go through the tribulation. <clears throat> You're shaking your head no. It's the many that's going to understand, the Bible said, that's going to understand who they are. With me? So they're going to understand when they hear that gospel, what's going to be preached over there, that many, and it's not going to be all, is going to understand what to do. When Lord Jesus Christ walked this earth, his earthly ministry was to Israel only. Matthew chapter 10 says that, and Matthew chapter 20, 15, 24 says that. You have to believe the word of God, that he died for many. He didn't die for all. He died for the nation Israel so they could be risen up and glorified God through Abraham, Isaac, and Gabriel would glorify Israel and all the nations would be blessed, come to the light. Well, that has been postponed. Now you find through Apostle Paul in the dispensation of grace that he did, that he, with the instrument that he, uh, at the cross, Okay, through the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection, that he shed his blood for all. Okay, now we understand that God came for all. Now, who's all here? Would that include Israel today? You better believe it. Would it include um, uh, the Arabs and any race? And, yeah. So today, you have to believe that Christ died for your sins and buried and rose again. He places you in the body. He gives you some instruction and some understand knowledge and wisdom for us to understand today what is going on. So if we can have the understanding, many will. All will not understand, but all can be saved, right? The Bible says God's will to have all men to be saved and come to what? The knowledge of the truth. This is truth here. 
So over there, that's why I believe a, the body of Christ is very, very important to understand how to get in it. And everybody's not in it. You know, the man that I talked to at the um, picnic table yesterday, I asked him, do you know who Jesus Christ is? He said, yeah. And I, I said, how are you saved? He said, I'm Pentecostal, Acts 2.38. That was his, that was his, what he believed to be saved. Acts 2.38 does not save you people. <laughs> Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and speak in tongues does not save you today, people. There's no blood work in the cross there. So you know what I had to do? Tell them about how Christ died for your sins and buried rose again. That's what saves you. And what these people over here are going to believe is believe what God's doing at that time. Okay, you with me? Let's, let's move on just a little bit more. Verse 35a says, And some of them of understanding shall fall. These are what kind of people? The understanding people. That's not going to be the non-understanding people because those non-understanding people is going to go right in that program of the Antichrist and survive just another day. That's what disturbs me if I can step away a little bit right here. you got a group of politicians that's trying to run this country that believes by giving a, a, a group of people what they want that they're going to survive through this tr uh, uh, turmoil, this mob rule. Their life is not saved just the same as your life is not saved if you bow down to this stuff. But if you stand strong with what Jesus Christ is doing today, that Christ, you know, in the dispensation of grace, you're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be pointed fingers at. You're going to be called a cult and all that stuff. Does that, should that bother you? In, 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 a, in your flesh it does a little bit. How can Uncle J James call me that? You know, he knows me. You know what I'm saying? It, it will hurt your pride. But you know what? You stand for truth in the dispensation of grace as far as they're going to stand for truth over there. And chapter 12, verse 3a says, And they that be wise shall stand, shall, excuse me, shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And Daniel chapter 12, verse 10 says, Many shall be purified, made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. They're going to be low white as white over there, shining bright, okay? And they're going to be different. Shouldn't you and I in the dispensation of grace be different? We don't want to be a part of the world system. We know that. There's not a, a denomination out there that want to be part of the world system, right? They preach about it every day against it but you got to watch how you join hands and sing kumbaya with just anybody out there because i tell you if you go against water baptism if you go against tithing and church membership the list goes on and on and on they'll cut you off <laughs> they soon just bury you to look at you you many of you have been down that road right now many of you know that once you made a stand that how many friends you got now you know what i mean but I, my encouragement, I know it sounds like, gosh, Ed, you're, it's doom and gloom. No, it's not. It's life in Jesus Christ in the dispensation of grace. It's going to be life in Jesus Christ over in that uh, tribulation period for the nation Israel. I'm going to end right there with, with the fact that we'll pick up next week a little more on, on, on Daniel chapter 11, verse 33. We'll get down to chapter 33. But I just want to encourage you to study your Bible. And if you're not a believer today, and, and we preach Jesus Christ crucified. We preach Jesus Christ that he died and buried and rose again for your sins. Not repent and be baptized for speaking in tongues, okay? They don't mix. There's all kinds of ways out there people says you can get to heaven. One way. Jesus Christ says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father but by what? me okay how we preach jesus christ today 
is that he died, was buried, and rose again. He places you in a body, which he is the head. And he takes that body. One of these days, he's going to catch us out here, and he places us in the heavenly position. And we're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to be with him forever. But after we're taken out of here, God goes back to the nation Israel on earth and all the nations, and he has to do what he said he promised them back over here. And he cleanses this earth, and there's a new heaven, new earth. The body of Christ is in heaven. Israel and the nations that goes through the uh, tribulation period and comes up, they're going to be on earth, and Jesus Christ is going to be ruling and reigning both. And it's going to be a wonderful time to be alive then. And listen, my friends, the Bible says that every man is appointed to die what? And then the judgment. You're going to die whether you're raptured out of here or not. You're go still going to die. You do realize that. Yep. Your body's going to die. So everybody's got to die. You don't want to die that second death. You don't want to end up here forever. Okay, And once you understand that, death has nothing on us, does it? You know, we see people die every day, don't we? We hear people die every day. But do they know Jesus Christ? And my encouragement to you is, is find out if your loved ones, if you truly love them, if they're saved. Father, thank you for the time. Thank you for things you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To next week, um, uh, you can check us up on the YouTube channel. We can uh, also, if you want to see us at www.dispensationalbiblechurch.org. And we encourage you, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please send us. Uh, you can text me, you can email me, or call me up. We'd love to hear from you. Until next week.